Hello, welcome to my channel. Thank you for watching. My name's Sarah and my channel is called Your True Shelf. And today I'm doing my haul for March. So the books that I acquired in the month of March. Um, I will start with um, three books which I got from um, the secondhand bookshop at Ickworth House, which I visited with my parents this month. <coughs> Excuse me. So the first one is um, The Lady and the Unicorn by Tracy Chevalier. I read um, The Last Runaway by Tracy Chevalier last year and I loved it and so when I saw this um, I wanted to get it and it's in mint condition as well. This is, um, I wouldn't normally pick this up necessarily so it's kind of taken out my comfort zone from the from the blurb. So it's about Jean, Jean Leviste, a 15th century nobleman close to the king who hires an artist to design six tapestries celebrating his rising status at court. Um, so it says um then the person he was hired um it says he catches sight of his patron's daughter and his pursuit of her pulls him into the web of fragile relationships between husbands and wife parents and children lovers and servants so um it sounds like i don't really read stuff that's set that long ago um so I am going out of my comfort zone, like I said, but I'm confident that I'll still enjoy it because I enjoyed her, The Last Runaway, so much and also Remarkable Creatures I've loved by her as well. Next was a book I've never heard of and um, I think it's a book in translation. Yeah. So that's called, this is called The Reader on the 627 by Jean-Paul Didi Laurent um, and it's translated by... Was sports, um. So it's. I just thought that the the blurb sounded really lovely. So it says, um, Guillain Vignol lives on the edge of existence, working at a book pulping factory in a job that he hates, but he has one pleasure in life: sitting on the six twenty seven train each day. Guillain recites aloud to a rapt audience from pages he has saved from the drawers of the pulping machine. But it is when he discovers the diary of a lonely young woman, Julie, a woman who feels as lost in the world as he does, that his journey will truly begin. I just love that. Like, I didn't, uh, yeah, he has to pop books and then he saves them and reads them to other people on the train journey. That just sounds so cool. Um, so I'm really looking forward to reading that. It sounds really lovely and cosy. And then the final one that I um, found in the secondhand shop um is by joanne harris and um simon of savage reads really likes joanne harris i've never read anything by her before and this one sounded the most appealing out of the books that are there so this is blackberry wine by joanne harris um it's basically um so it says jay mcintosh is trapped by memory in the old familiar landscape of his childhood and more enticing more enticing than the present and to which he longs to return a bottle of home-brewed wine left to him by a long-vanished friend seems to provide the, both the key to an old mystery and a doorway into another world. As the unusual properties of the strange brew take effect, Jay escapes to a derelict farmhouse in the French village of Lanskenet, where a ghost from the past waits to confront him. So, it says there's some magical realism, some time travel, I love the front cover, um, and another bit with a French connection. Okay, so the next one, two, three, four, five. Um, one of my colleagues at work has, he said he's got about 500 books that he's sorting through and he's bringing in ones um, that he no longer wants. Uh, so I managed to get first dibs on the first lot he brought in. So I chose this one, which I've never heard of before. Um, my Life in Houses by Margaret Forster. This sounded really lovely. Um, basically, it says on the back, um, I was born on the 25th of May 1938 in the front bedroom of a house in Orton Road, a house on the outer edge of Raffles, a council estate. I was a lucky girl. So begins Margaret Forster's journey through the houses she's lived in, from the sparkling new council house to her beloved London home of today. This is a book about what houses are to us, the effect they have on the way we live our lives and the changing nature of our homes. From blackening grates and outside privies to cities dominated by bedsits and lodgings, the houses of today converted back into single dwellings. It is a personal inquiry into the meaning of home. I just thought that sounded so lovely. Um, 
um, yeah, I'm really, I'm really excited to read this. It sounds very original, something like I've never read before. And um, yeah, I love the cover again. And I'm really glad that I came across this one. The next one is something I would never have picked up normally. Um, so it's out of my comfort zone again. Um, but I just thought it might be our kind of fast paced, easy read. Um, and it says that fans of Apple Tree Yard will like it. And I loved Apple Tree Yard. So this is called The Loving Husband um, by Christabel Kent. Uh, this is um, Fran Hall and her husband Nathan have moved with their two children to a farmhouse on the edge of the Fens. A chance to get away from London and have a fresh start. But when Fran wakes one night to find Nathan gone, she makes a devastating discovery. As questions about her husband and her relationship start to mount, Fran's life begins to spiral out of control. What is she hiding from the police about her marriage and does she really know the man she shared her bed with? Like I said, I wouldn't have bought it, seeing as it's free, I thought it sounded good. The next one is called Dangerous Crossing by Rachel Reese. Again, another one I've never heard of. Just really nice to have all of these um, new books. Um, An exquisite story of love, murder, adventure and dark secrets. England, September 1939. Lily Shepherd boards a cruise liner for her new life in Australia and is plunged into a world of cocktails, jazz and glamorous friends. But as the sun beats down, poisonous secrets begin to surface. Suddenly Lily finds herself trapped with nowhere to go. Australia, six weeks later... The world is at war, the cruise liner docks and a beautiful young woman is escorted onto dry land in handcuffs. What has she done? Sounds really interesting um, and probably quite fast paced as well. And then the next one, I actually had no idea till I just um, read the name out, is by the same lady who wrote the book about the houses that I just spoke about. Um, this is How to Measure a Cow and I'm pretty sure I picked this up and put it down a few times when it was new, um, which was probably last year or the year before, I think. Um, oh, 2016, longer ago than I thought. So this says, Tara Fraser has a secret. Desperate to escape from herself and her past, she changes her name, packs up her London home, and moves to a town in the north of England where she knows no one. But one of her new neighbours, Nancy, is intrigued by her, and hard as Tara tries to distance herself, she starts to drop her guard. Then a letter arrives. An old friend wants to meet up. Struggling to keep her old life at bay, Tara soon discovers the dangers of fighting the past. Sounds interesting. Um, so one more from my colleague at work. Um, that is Angel's Game by Carlos Ruiz de Fon, which is part of the uh, Cemetery of Forgotten Books trilogy. Um, the first one being The Shadow of the Wind, which I had on audio and really enjoyed. And so this is the next one, I believe. Um, in the trilogy and then I have three more to go so one of them is one that I found that I've wanted for ages and I found it in the supermarket because um, it must have just come out in paperback and the writing is really small but never mind and um, that is Lost Connections by Johan Harry so I saw Johan Harry at um, the Norwich Literary Festival last summer and I thought he was absolutely brilliant brilliant even he um he is a journalist who has suffered with depression for a long time and he's researched extensively about depression and the best ways to cure depression why it happens whether antidepressants actually work or not and how we manage depression in our society versus in other places in the world and he was such a good speaker and i thought he was just so interesting and um it really kind of you know, doing the job I do and seeing so much mental illness. It was a fantastic um, talk that he gave. And so I really wanted to read his book, Lost Connections. And um, now I have finally got a copy, which is um, going to be very interesting to read. And then the final two are by the same author. Um, and they are both by Mark Thomas, who um, is a political comedian and journalist and um all round amazing human being and i went and saw him live um i think for the third or fourth time last week with my husband and he was doing a talk about the nhs which was called check up our nhs at 70 and this book here is a very very small book which is basically the um the script from the show and um he it's got some some photos inside as well 
um and it's basically he spent time shadowing um for a month in different doctors and nurses in four london hospitals he spent some time in general practice and he interviewed politicians and ministers um who are involved in past and present healthcare um to get their take on things and it's really funny as well because obviously he's a stand up so um yeah he's blessed his heart he came and spoke to me at the end and or oh, I went and spoke to him should I say um and he signed both the books for me and um so this will be a treasured one to add to my collection of his books and then this one I also chose 100 minor acts of descent because um I saw the show that went with this one um, whenever it was maybe a couple of years ago um, and it's basically where he has um, well it's a hundred minor acts of descent that he's done over a year some some big some small some of them are just really hilarious but they've always got a moral objective so he's trying to achieve something through humour and there's lots of pictures in this book um, when I was just flicking through now I found one about Tesco's where is it so I can't remember exactly what the message was um, in terms of why they were doing this. But so um, <laughs> they've just changed the signs in some Tesco's um, shelves. So they've gone with exactly the same font. She wouldn't actually notice unless you read it that they've changed. So, for instance, they've got um, here, you can see CCTV blind spot. Um, here, two for the price of four. Sugar, one of your five a day. Tiramisu lacks adventure and taste um and this is probably my favorite one here day after day after day it's always the bloody same um so he's it, it's just it's funny and it has got a political message to it and um again i um you know i really love his books and so i'll add them to my treasured collection and so yeah that's the books that i hauled in the month of march um I have not had no books in the library and whilst I love and adore my library um, I am so looking forward soon to cracking on with my TBR I cannot tell you how much um, I've got three more books left to read on the welcome shortlist and they should be arriving any time now any day this week um, I've got until the 1st of May to read them um, that's because that's when the winner is announced so I look forward to doing that and fingers crossed Simon and I are going to meet up at the end of this month to go through um, the shortlist because we've been reading it together um, so that we can say our thoughts and predict our winner and um, so that should be lovely and um, I hope you are all um, acquiring lots of lovely books and I will speak to you all soon bye bye